Hey, happy Monday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Boy, I pray I just appreciate so much you being with me. And, uh, you know, the wonderful comments that we're receiving, people's lives being transformed and uh, coming to understand uh, the beauty, the harmony, the unity of the biblical narrative when one comes to understand coveted eschatology. Well, we are involved in a study of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul said that when, when the mortal shall put on immortality, when the corruptible shall put on incorruptibility, then shall be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. Now, virtually every scholar that I know of agrees that Paul is drawing from, citing and quoting from Isaiah chapter 25. Be sure to go back and look at the three previous videos on fulfilling Israel's hope. This is absolutely critical. All futurist eschatologies, okay, amillennialism, postmillennialism, to a degree, premillennialism, all believe and teach that the future resurrection comes at the end of the Christian age. And certainly, amillennialism and postmillennialism says the resurrection is the fulfillment of new covenant promises made to, to the church. God was through with Israel at the cross. The old covenant was canceled at the cross. Folks, that is absolutely, completely false. Now, ask yourself the following question. If God was through with the Old Testament, if God was through with Israel at the cross, and remember, the resurrection, i.e. the adoption, was an old covenant promise made to old covenant Israel after the flesh. Romans 8.23 through 9, chapter 9, 1 to 3. As I stated videos ago, since the promise of the resurrection was made to old covenant Israel after the flesh, then unless... Israel, after the flesh, as a covenant people, still exist. If they do not exist, then the resurrection has been fulfilled or God's promise to them failed. Remember, the Adamic promise of the resurrection was assimilated into and became the Abrahamic hope of the resurrection, which was then assimilated into Israel her feast days, her promises, her prophecies, and became the one hope to be fulfilled at the end of the old covenant age of Israel. Not at the end of time. Not that at the end of the Christian age. This is so fundamentally important. And I know this sounds a bit repetitious, but you know, we learn by repetition. If you, if you espouse an eschatology that says God was through with Israel, God was through with the Old Covenant at the cross, and yet you still affirm a futurist eschatology, then you have a major elephant in the room. Paul said his eschatology was nothing but the hope of Israel found in Moses, the law, and the prophets. I have made this argument and made this point in one debate after another. And I have yet to have a futurist deal with this point. So when Paul said the resurrection, the time when the mortal would put on immortality. You know, look, let me say this. It does not matter what your concept of the body in 1 Corinthians 15 is. And do you know what? It doesn't even matter what your concept of the body of Christ might be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying there. We can discuss that all day long. But the point of fact is, on one level, it does not matter what your concept of it might be you must correlate and harmonize 
your concept of the body in 1 Corinthians 15, your concept of the body of Christ with the undeniable reality that Paul said the resurrection would be when Isaiah 25, Hosea 13, Daniel 12, Ezekiel 37 would be fulfilled. So let me say this again. If you have an eschatology that says that God was through with Israel, that says Israel is no longer God's covenant people, if you believe that the old covenant was canceled at the cross, then you absolutely must deal with 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Because Paul believed, Paul taught through inspiration that the resurrection would be in fulfillment of God's old covenant promises made to old covenant Israel. Now, I know that's a bit repetition, repetitious, but I just feel like it's absolutely critical for us to keep this indisputable fact in front of our eyes, in front of our mind. Tomorrow, we're going to begin an examination of Isaiah chapter 25, since Paul said that the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 would be in fulfillment of Isaiah 25. Well, what did Paul or what did Isaiah, <coughs> excuse me, predict in Isaiah 25? Did he predict physical bodies coming out of literal dust? The answer to that is absolutely no. So you do not want to miss this. Now, you need to order yourself a copy of my book, The Resurrection of Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. This is an absolutely devastating critique of the futurist view of the resurrection. And I can assure you, there's nothing else like it out there. This will show you that all of the attempts to, you know, just push away, push away, to ignore what Daniel had to say about the resurrection <clears throat> and what Paul literally had to say about the resurrection are simply specious. You need to get a copy of the book. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, order the book, send me a note that says you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping, okay? It'll save you $5. Well, thank you for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. Don't forget, in the morning, we begin a study of Isaiah chapter 25 and what it predicted in relationship to what Paul was predicting in 1 Corinthians 15. We'll see you on the flip side.